Hi everyone, I'm Eric Romanishan from Haywood Waterways Association. And I'm here today at the beautiful Canton Library up on the hill. Their beautiful pollinator garden and their vegetable garden. And I'm here to talk about rain barrels. But first, before we get to this, I want to see a show of hands. How many of you all have heard of Haywood Waterways? Put your hands up. <laughs> Thank you to those that have heard of it and know that we're doing good work, right? But if those who haven't, Haywood Waterways is a nonprofit organization that works on protecting and improving the river, streams, and lakes of Haywood County, North Carolina. And we've been around since the late 1990s, so it's been a while, and I think we've done a lot of great work. So what we do is we focus on what we call the non-point source pollution. Basically, whatever washes off our rooftops, pavement, parking lots, roads, driveways, and carries that rainwater downhill. And what's at the bottom of every hill? But a river, a lake, or a stream. And so that rainwater is picking up cigarette butts, garbage bags, uh, fertilizers, pesticides pet waste, uh, fluids leaking from our cars, and that's all going into our waterways. Now I want to pause for a second and ask you, how did you use water today? I assume we all brushed our teeth, took a shower, uh, drank coffee, had orange juice, milk, you know, all those things require clean water. What about in the summer? We're out here on a beautiful winter day the summer, water's still a little cold right now, but in the summer when the water's warmer, we like to go fishing, we like to go swimming, we like to go paddling in our river streams and lakes. That needs clean water. Think about where your food comes from. It doesn't come from the grocery store. It comes from a farmer who needs that clean water to irrigate their crops. It doesn't need sediment clogging up their irrigation pipes. Uh, sediment, remember that one. I'll come back to that in here in a second. So think of some industrial processes. Here in Haywood County, we've got Evergreen Packaging, Giles Chemical. They use water as part of their processes and they need to clean. So clean water plays a very valuable role in our daily lives. And that can't, I haven't mentioned the uh, economic factor. Think about all the tourists that come here, spending money at our gas stations, restaurants, hotels, to view our beautiful watershed, to go fishing, to go paddling in. You know, it's a big economic driver for our county, supports a lot of jobs. So clean water is very important and Haywood Waterways is here to protect that, to do that job. And we do that through education and engagement activities, just like I'm doing here today. But we also do that in working with partnerships such as the Haywood Soil and Water Conservation District, Haywood Cooperative Extension Service, the Town of Canton, any number of these entities to find the technical and financial resources to help a willing property owner fix an issue. Maybe it has to do with the stormwater or an eroding stream bank, maybe a failing septic system. You know, any number of issues that relate to that non-point source pollution, Haywood Waterways is here to try to help find that those resources and in my many years of being with Haywood Waterway 16 now I've encountered a lot of people and the common theme is we all care about water but maybe we don't know how to fix any issues or we don't have the money to do it and that's what Haywood Waterways does we try to, to find those resources sediment I mentioned that word it happens to be our number one pollutant number one water quality concern in Haywood County. But what is sediment? It's basically dirt that washes off the landscape into a river, stream, or lake. But you might say it's dirt, it's natural, why do we care? Well, anything in excess can cause problems. Think about where trout, popular food item, big economic driver for our county, where do they lay their eggs? They lay the eggs in the rocks in the bottom of the river, streams, and lakes. Where do the food that the trout eat, where do they live? In those rocks. Too much sediment will cover those rocks, smother them, 
lost the habitat and cause reductions in our trout population and food. Uh, I mentioned the farmers growing our food. I'll highlight that point again. If a farmer has to pay someone to clean out their irrigation system or spend time doing it, it's going to reduce their productivity. They're going to lose money. They're not going to want to lose money. They're going to pass the cost on to the consumer. So we might see food prices go up. Think about Lake Genalesca. If you ever driven by there, every time they try to dredge it. If they didn't, it would just turn into a giant wetland. And think about all the people that visit, come here to visit Haywood County, stay at Lake Jaleska. How about how many of us like to walk around that lake? Um, it's a very beautiful place to be because of that water. It wouldn't be as beautiful if it was a wetland, although I enjoy wetlands. I'm a biologist, but a lot of people wouldn't. Um, all right, so our number one pollutant is sediment. And the number one cause, as you might have picked up already, is stormwater. I'll mention it again. I already mentioned. I already know. I mentioned it once already. Stormwater washing off our rooftops, our parking lots, our driveways, picking up those pollutants and carrying it downhill to a river, stream, or lake. That's of course the number one cause of our water quality problems. So there's a number of solutions out there. You may have heard the term rain garden or bioretention area designed to collect water and let it filter back down into the ground. And once it's in the ground, there's microbes in there, plants that absorb some of those pollutants. Uh, constructed wetlands are great stormwater protection measures. You may have heard of a bioswale, basically like a ditch with rocks and plants. And there's sediment traps, kinds of different stormwater collection and treatment systems out there. What I'm going to highlight now is this one right here, a rain barrel. We built for the library. It's pretty easy. There's lots of great videos out there on the internet on how to build a rain barrel or how to use it. Uh, I'll just point out that if you're interested, Haywood Waterways does sell these as a little fundraiser for us. And we also hold a rain barrel construction workshop teaching folks how to build them themselves. So this is just a food grade barrel and it's got the, again, I'll point out the spout down here that you can just connect a standard garden hose to and then you can drag that garden hose wherever it needs to be. Now in this case it's gravity fed so you can't raise that hose above the level of the water in the barrel because it won't go anywhere so you got to drop it down. I've also seen uh, people put sump pumps in this. If a power source is nearby they can then now pump that water uphill. So again, lots of ways you can do this. In this case, very easy to maintain. You can just pop the lids off. Now I mentioned food grade, right? Instantly I get a smell of vinegar pickles. This is what a pickle, pickle barrel. And that, in this case, that smell will dissipate over time. I have built these out of jalapeno pepper barrels once before. That was a little a little spicy, you might say. So, um, you might get some leaf material sticks in here and make, and you can pop these off, clean it out, and just put it back on, and you're good to go again. So, very handy in the winter too, because a lot of people like to winterize their barrels, empty them out, flip them over, put them under some a rooftop just to protect them from that. Uh, potential ice that might expand and break some seals. But in this case, this is some pretty thick plastic. And the seal on this um, bulkhead fitting that we used, it's pretty stout, so I doubt those are going to crack. But in some cases, they might be sealed with silicone. That might expand and break the seal. So it helps um, if you can store it under, under some, a rooftop where it doesn't get wet. So a couple good wax. Back in business. Now I mentioned this was 50 gallons. Do the math in your head. A gallon of water weighs eight pounds. So 50 times eight, that's 400 pounds. This thing is pretty heavy and I can't even move it. So you want to make sure that it's on a stable base for the safety of anyone that might be around it, children, for example, as well as you don't want it falling over, getting a whole bunch of water in the building that it's next to, 
getting into your basement, wherever you have it might be. And also you don't want to lose the water that you just collected. I will point out that these do fill up really quick, even with the small surface area that this shed has. So I recommend elevating them up on some concrete blocks. All right, so if you come back here though, you can see how the connection is. I've seen some ways where they'll just cut the downspout, put an elbow on it and cut a hole on top of this and just run it in that way. If you do it that way, then you got to cut a hole in here and put some kind of overflow system out. And that's just some, just some basic plumbing PVC connections and garden hoses where you can then carry that water away from any building that it might be sitting on. All right, but in this case, they have this awesome tool that, well, it's got a little cup on the end of this pipe that's in the middle of this downspout that'll collect water, carry it to the barrel, and then when uh, the barrel fills up, it'll just flow backwards. So this barrel actually probably needs to be raised up a little bit, uh, at least get it up to where this level of the barrel is about equal to where it comes in here, because that water's gonna come out this barrel, the top of this barrel, as it's overflow. But if it's raised up just a little bit, that water will come right back in here, down the downspout and out to where it used to go. So, very, very handy. They're pretty easy to use and to put together. And if you have any questions about these, or about stormwater, or pollution, or maybe what you can do on your own property, just give us a call. 828-476-4667. Go to our website, haywoodwaterways.org. It's got my email on it, lots of information. And give us a call. I'd be happy to help. Now, I will put in a plug for the library here. Um, if you've never been out here, they have a beautiful pollinator garden. They have beautiful vegetable gardens. And they are always in need of volunteers. So I know Jennifer can't say anything right now. She's shooting, so I'll say it for her. Come on out and help. Come in the spring, come in the summer, and uh, maybe she'll give you a, a little bit of vegetable to go home with. Thank you all for your time.